Hello guys and welcome to another Robin's Crew show. Yes, it's Wednesday the 24th of March 2021. So, wowie, we've had a heck of a lot of news going on. So, what's to start with? Well, we've got P&O is going to start sailing out from the UK on the 27th of June 2021. They're going to be doing cruises to nowhere, which means they're going to be sailing all the way down the British coast. Not stopping in a port of call, but you get to enjoy seven nights on board the wonderful Britannia, followed shortly by the Iona. Now, interestingly as well, we're going to have Princess, who are going to be doing the exact same thing. They're going to be sailing with the Sky Princess and also the Regal Princess, and they're commencing on the 31st of July 2021. Again, they're going to be scenically cruising for a little while. However, as of September 2021, it looks like Princess are going to be a bit more optimistic and they're actually going to start doing ports of call. First one of which will be the 1st of September 2021 on board Regal, where she'll be calling in at Belfast. Shortly after that, the next cruise on the 5th should be doing Belfast and Liverpool. And then the 23rd of September, we are going to see Belfast, Liverpool and Glasgow. So it looks like Princess is starting slow and they're going to just get the ships out from Southampton doing some cruising. It means that you can go and enjoy it. Now, Princess are advertising this as Seacations, which I think is pretty cool, actually. I mean, it means that it gives people an opportunity to actually get back on board a ship. It means we can go and cruise. It'll be a week. You're not going to go anywhere. But, I mean, let's face facts here. We're going to be on board a floating resort. I mean, honestly speaking, I can't wait. It's going to be wicked. I genuinely cannot wait. It's going to be so good. Hopefully I get on board one. Um, also, I mean, to be fair, it's also a really good way for people who've never cruised before to actually get the feet wet. No pun intended. <laughs> but no, it's really good, actually. Just from that point of view, it means that people will have that opportunity to get on board a ship. They'll see what cruising's like. With Princess, interestingly, you can actually get their all-inclusive package included within the cruise fare because Princess have got two separate fares at the moment. One is just their standard cruise fare. The other is their all-inclusive fare, which works out, I think, £30 per person per night more than the standard cruise fare. But you get all of your drinks. Well, you get up to 15 drinks a day. And you also get your gratuities included within that. I think you get Wi-Fi as well. Pretty good deal, though. And then with P&O, obviously, it's just a standard full board on the ship. And then you just pay as you go with your drinks. There is a lot more news, guys, but I'm going to do that in a different video. So um, also, just as an aside, please like the video, hit subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment about what I'm talking about. Now, on to our main topic of today, and that is travel agents. Now, you're probably sat there thinking, you're a travel agent, Rob. And I'm like, well, yes, no, I am. I do work within the travel industry, and I do work for a small independent cruise agency. Now, what I'm actually going to be talking about specifically is this, is travel agent loyalty as a client, <clears throat> how people do shop around, but more precisely, the actual reputation of travel agents within the industry. Now, in the last 12 months, um, no doubt everyone knows that, well, cruises in, hasn't exactly been going and it hasn't been a thing. Now, there have been a lot of cruise companies, specifically agencies, whose reputation has suffered quite badly from this. Now, if you have a look, okay, so with any travel agency, you can always have a look and everyone has got a trust pilot. Now, trust pilot is generally speaking a good way of knowing whether a company is doing the right thing or isn't doing the right thing. Now, I mean, the company I work for, we hold a 4.9 rating on trust pilot, which is brilliant. However, we're lucky. We did things right during the pandemic. And apart from anything else, mainly it was just pure communication with our clients. This was something that I feel like a lot of agencies didn't do so well. I mean, you've seen probably all over social media, I mean, especially in the UK, there have been certain companies like Igloo and Planet, for example, who have been dragged through the mud because of the fact that you ended up with a Facebook group, their Igloo Refund Action Group which was piling pressure on them. They were also leaving very negative Trustpilot reviews. But I feel like that all fundamentally kind of came down to 
the fact that they didn't communicate with their clients. It was the whole thing of, we're dealing with your refunds, but never giving an actual timeline. If they just come out and said, we'll refund you and we'll refund you in X amount of time, and these are the reasons why, I dare say people would have been a little bit more understanding. The interesting point here is this, is that when you look at the big examples of, tr of cruise agencies, like Cruise First, Cruise 118, uh, Cruise Nation, Viva Voyage, um, Six Star Cruises, Imagine Cruises, um, Hayes Travel. They're all very, very big travel agents within the UK. And if you have a look at their trust pilot reviews, it varies massively. Some of them have got really good reviews and some of them have come out of all of this smelling like roses, but a lot of them haven't. And you kind of have to think, why? I mean, personally, I feel like it's to do with the refunds. It's to do with the fact that people don't feel satisfied with the service. A lot of people just wanted to get their money back, which I don't blame people for. I mean, if you spend a lot of money on a cruise, then you do want to get that money back. But I feel like a lot of companies were kind of fobbing clients off, saying, oh, yeah, you'll get your money, but we can't tell you when. And I think that honestly was kind of the thing that gave most people kind of the most anxiety or rather really rile people up the wrong way. This is why you've seen so many companies facing chargebacks from credit card companies where people have just got sick of waiting for a refund and have requested a chargeback. Or you've seen people using the power of social media, for example, with Facebook, <clears throat> correlating a massive group and then using that to their advantage. You've seen people take big independence to court to try and get their money back. At the end of the day, it just comes down to communication. And I feel like a lot of companies lacked that over the pandemic. I mean, I get a lot of companies were very busy. I mean, you had God knows how many cancellations all come in at the same time. You had a lot of refunds you needed to get through. You had everything going on. I mean, I know that I dealt with it personally where I'm at. But the difference is, is that we approach things slightly differently. We communicated with our clients and let them know how things were. I suppose what I'm kind of coming back around to is loyalty. And I feel like that's an interesting point because a lot of people who've probably had really bad experiences with certain travel agents over this whole pandemic, ultimately I feel like a lot of people are motivated by price. And be it whether you've had a booking with a company, you've had a crap service, and, you've, and they've got a really bad rating on Trustpilot, People don't have very long memories, I found with this. You can have a really bad experience and then suddenly if the price is right, then you're gonna go back to that agent. You're still gonna book again, just based on price, regardless of the actual experience that you had. And that unfortunately is a commonality within the cruise industry, is that people are willing to shop till they drop. Literally, I've seen it. I've lost bookings because I'm five pounds more expensive than another travel agent, five pounds. But when you think, it's when people have shopped around God knows how many times, and they've done that to secure the best price, but then you have to think, well, what about your phone bill? And how much you've probably spent on that? And is it worth the fact that you approached one travel agent, they've done all the work for you, you've then taken that quote and shopped it around to everybody else, and that one agency you've taken it to have gone, oh yeah, well, I can do that package and I can knock X amount off the price. I think this is kind of something that I kind of feel like clients are missing within in, within the industry is that as an agent, I can tell you that my time is worth something and my time is worth profit. With most bespoke packages, you'll find that there is a markup built in there somewhere. And even with just packages that you're buying from the cruise line, but you're using an agent for, there's still commission built into that. And... I mean, yeah, we have a commission that we use to discount with, but still we're worth, we're worth a bit of money. We're worth a bit of profit. We're worth a bit of commission. I mean, our time isn't free. And I suppose that's something that, and I suppose that's kind of where I'm coming back to is the fact that generally speaking within the industry, people do want the best price. I understand that. But also I feel like loyalty to a certain agency is also valuable. Get to know your agent. 
get to know who they are as a person. I have a great repeat clientele. I have a lot of people who actually over this pandemic I've managed to Zoom with, which has been great, and actually meet them, many of whom I've never actually met face to face. And because of this, I've been able to Zoom with them. We've had a video chat. We've actually had a chat face to face, got to know each other a bit better. When you find an agent that you like, be loyal to them. And sometimes it's not just about gaining the best price in the market, but sometimes it's actually worth knowing that you're gonna have that good service from your agent. And that is kind of my takeaway from this, for everybody, generally speaking, is if you find an agent that you like, that gives you good service, who is a good human, take your business to them. I appreciate everyone who wants the best deal. Do a little bit of shopping, but don't shop till you drop. Just mention that you've had a few prices from other people and see what they can do. 90% of the time, if you're loyal to an agent, then they are more willing to go a bit above and beyond in terms of service for you. Anyway, I'm gonna stop because you're probably all bored of listening to me. I will say thank you very much for listening. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Take care. Robin's Cruise Show, out. <laughs>